What happens when you take two planes and mash them together? We're going to find out on this episode of In the Hangar. I used to be a well-respected member of the aviation community, and then I started flying a Cirrus and that changed. Oh, well, that was great. Until the engine quit. And all of a sudden I see these explosions and these trees exploding. I'm walking away a better pilot because of this discussion. We're back in studio with the Fat Tire Cowboys. You know, one episode alone isn't going to contain you guys, is it? So we need, we need, yeah, we need to come back and, and be able to, uh, to, to visit all that is Fat Tire Cowboys. With me today is Chad. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being here. Welcome. We got Brian. And we've got Carrie. I almost said something else. So good. <laughs> Carrie, thank you. So there's just too many Fat Tire Cowboys. No, there's not. There are several. So yeah. There are several. Um, well, you guys are quite a group. You guys have a lot of com camaraderie and, and uh, a lot of things going on. We learned uh, in an earlier episode about uh, how you guys got started. And, uh, but what I want to talk about now is uh, let's talk about that Yak 110 and, and how that plane came about. And I, I guess, Chad, you're the one that's yeah, the driving so. force of that. I am, yeah. I guess uh, this was a brainchild with uh, Jeff Bourbon, who's our pilot, and a guy named Dell Collar, who is a master craftsman builder. He built the uh, Jack Lynx biplane, jet biplane. And uh, so they came up with this idea about three years ago to put these two Yak 55s together. And uh, we spent uh, some time engineering the project and things like that. And we made it happen a couple of years ago. So, yeah. All right. So for those who don't know what what a Yak 110 is, uh, I think we're going to get a good representation. Brian, you have uh, yeah. something you want to demonstrate. We're, we want to present it. this to Chad. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> right on. All right, Brian, tell us what, what's going on. Uh, so we uh, had this... <laughs> commissioned to be uh, built in uh, at Oshkosh and we we got it yesterday so. okay good I was wondering but, where uh, the royalties are at yeah so uh, <laughs> so the model company accidentally posted a picture on Instagram when it was finished and yeah Chad got Chad got a little he's like hey where's where's my royalties on this thing you know so he, I wasn't that upset he, he yeah. didn't he didn't get much traction out of all of us we're all no, we're all just kind of like eh, you know I, yeah. it is what it is Chad so, so cool. but that's it that's the yeah. one we saw a picture of all right so that's so guys walk me through how in the world this thing flies and uh you know, what all's going on? All right. Well, now I'm nervous you because are. I got this presented to me. But anyway, <laughs> so this side of the air, of the Yak-110, this was my airplane. Okay. And uh, I flew it about 400 hours and flew air shows and competition and aerobatics in it and things like that. And this airplane was Jeff Bourbon's, our pilots. So I've flown air shows and aerobatics, comp aerobatic competitions in his as well. So we were good friends from 2002, and when they came up with this idea, he owned his, and my yak was sold to years ago to somebody else up in Delaware. So we tracked it down, and I was able to buy it back. And so the cool thing was to put the two planes together that we had both flown a lot, mm -hmm. you know, to put them together to make this one Yak 110. So, Okay, so what goes into certifying something like this to fly okay it's experimental it's certified experimental exhibition and so uh it was built in boise idaho by del collar and some other guys and um we had the dar come in and he it inspects it and everything else and uh finally gives us a, a certificate so what what were the challenges to make this thing flyable what what were some of the things that obstacles and, and problems that you had to solve well, to the, make this thing work yeah the main problem or the main uh, the key to the thing is the center section, and um, we uh, we had an aeronautical engineer from Falcon. He worked mm -hmm. for Falcon and Lear, and he does uh, some stuff on his own. And he built the center section uh, on a CAD model and um, all these different things. And we were able to simulate the airplane uh, with CAD CAM, which is really cool. And simulate we had I think uh, I don't know 1,100 different points of analysis on it, so they could twist it and turn it and put G's on it and see what things were going to do and. So we got to fly the airplane basically before we built it. So mm. the center section is pretty challenging. It's got fuel tanks and smoke tanks and has to have pressurization for the uh, jet fuel tank because it has to be under pressure. So it's a lot going on in there. But it was it was milled out of one, one piece, piece of, of billet aluminum. aluminum. This The center yeah. part? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so very strong. So this <clears throat> is not original with either plane? No. So totally totally new there. No, we... we my plane landed, uh, guy flew it in from, like I said, Delaware. Ben Anderson, he's one of the mechanics, too. He's our head mechanic. And, anyway, he flew the thing in, and we took the wing off this side and the wing off that side. 
and uh, kind of stuck them together in the hangar and went, yeah, that's going to look cool when we get it done. <laughs> and so uh, 14 months later, we flew it with the jet. So we flew it without the jet in a year. So uh, it was a pretty quick process, you know, to keep, get it going. I, I didn't realize. I'm, and from my angle, I'm like, he keeps saying jet. But i like, okay, yeah. holy cow, what <laughs> what kind of cruising speed that give you? Well, the jet is a uh, T-38 uh, trainer. Okay. It's a G610. Uh, it's got 3,000 pounds of thrust. Um, excuse me, the two... Uh, pro- propellers they have together have 15 or let's say you know 3,000 pounds of thrust together so we have 6,000 pounds of thrust on an airplane that weighs 4,300 pounds at air show weight <laughs> so it's we're we're still have a speed limit of 250 knots indicated just by the analysis of the airframe and all that kind of thing and but uh it 250 300 knots straight and level pretty easy I mean it'll it'll peg the airspeed indicator. So Jeff's able to, if y'all saw it at Oshkosh, he's able to roll it, you know, invert it and then push up and accelerate vertically. Wow. And so it's got a lot of, a lot of juice behind it. Well, that was my next question. How does it fly? How does it feel? Uh, well, the first flight, we didn't have the jet on it. We had a certified uh, multi-engine experimental. Um, and so the jet was not on it. And Jeff took it up. Well, he had Lynn Fox, the guy test flew it first for uh, for us and he's a well-known test pilot in the aerobatic world with uh kit planes and things like that so anyway he flew it first and then jeff jumped in it and he said that it flew exactly like a yak 55 it <laughs> felt the same it just really? was two of them put together so he said he could have flown his his advanced uh known sequence ic sequence with it right off the bat just okay so so it was a pilot left seat then yeah he it is because that was his airplane Ah, uh, my, and it's just a passenger in the right seat. It, it's not even that good. No, I, <laughs> it's, yeah, we, there's a there's a long running joke about the thing between me and Jeff and whoever else that wants to listen is that my 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 side has just been stripped naked of everything. It's got we we built it to be dual controlled, and right. so it was dual controlled in the beginning, and so since then the stick's been taken out of it. The only thing that's in it is a. Uh, a panel, a digital panel, it's really pretty cool, and a seat and seat belt. So you can give rides in it. Mm-hmm. But uh, so far in 18, we, we cross country the machine around. So that's just basically our luggage pod uh, for taking oil and, and, you know, what have you in there. One of the interesting things about the way they did this is that you can take the center section out, take the jet engine off, put the wings back on both airplanes, and fly them away. They, they, the airplanes are not. What does the jet up. engine buy you? Other than fun. That's fun. The, that's yeah. the, <laughs> Jeff calls it the fun button. Yeah. So you got props here and the thumb buttons on, I mean, the, the fun buttons on your thumb. Is, so. it, is it the kind of thing you just activate, like like a like a thrust button you just hit to give you some thrust for a moment and then take it off? No, he runs it all the time. Okay. Yeah. And was there any kind of challenge with that getting ahead of the propellers? No, everybody asks us that. And, um the, the airframe is still limited to the to the airspeed that a normal Yak 55 would be to uh, limited to. So 250. Yeah. So okay. it doesn't. It's not going to push the props any any more than it normally would. So. Okay, because they were going to go that fast anyway. Yeah. Wow. And then I the think jets if at Chad 50. Would let me fly. I'd be one of the first people that could do a, a double ground loop. <laughs> <laughs> you I could mean, set a record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah, that he could do that. Yeah. Really. Double I've never ground seen loop. That's the, <laughs> now we got the next thing that you. Can, hey, when you do that, go ahead and videotape. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we will. Yeah, we will. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, I think when we started, when Chad, <clears throat> when he started out with this thing, we're all like, can't wait for it to show up to the airport so we can all fly it. And then you see what the engineering and everything that went into getting it. Everyone's like, uh, not a chance. <laughs> not, you know, not a chance. I wouldn't even fly it. Um, I mean, they wanted me to. They were like, oh, oh you wouldn't fly no, it? No, gosh, no. No. Mm-mm. Well, you said it flew so well in the computer. Well, yeah, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't fly the computer either. <laughs> no, you know, that, actually, when my plane arrived, they said, man, you're going to fly it one last time? I'm like, hell no, I'm not going to take it up and crash it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not going to ground loop the thing right out of the box. Another you know, really so. interesting part about Chad's part side of the, air, of the airplane is that uh, this the engine quit on this airplane, and he put it down. And he took it completely apart, put a new engine on it, 
took it to uh, still on the te- they even got it on here uh, the sticker on yeah. it that's why it says Hills Hot Rod on it took it to Hills Hot Rod and they painted in Lubbock Texas all these <laughs> flames and things on it and because they didn't realize it was a plane they thought it was <laughs> probably a right yeah. yeah it went back to the airport and Chad put it all back together and there there it was so we don't want that getting around though because I don't. I act like I'm not a very good mechanic, so that he'll do everything for me. <laughs> he does everything for us anyway, so it's like, anyway. Well, have you, uh, besides the double ground loop, have you gotten to uh, to fly the uh, Yak 110? No, I haven't. That's, but it is, I mean, it is quite a stir in the aviation community. When we went to Oshkosh, you could just, if you haven't seen it, you need to go watch this thing fly, because it'll sit there and it'll hover, and you think, this is, is this, this is a big deal, and then, I'm sitting, kind of watching everybody, and there, you hear these cameras just going click, 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 getting pictures of this thing, and you think this is a big deal. It's pretty incredible. Well, what do you normally fly, Corey? I've got a Cessna 180. Okay, so it's just a little bit different. So, what, are you going to like do a mashup then of like a couple 180s? Call it a 360. <laughs> well, I'll probably do a mashup, but I don't think it'll be two airplanes. <laughs> it'll be like with uh, the canyon wall. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, we don't want we don't want to see that. Yeah, uh, I don't not, know. Not good for air shows. But it's good for for, for YouTube and stuff. So uh, don't yeah. say things like that because you know I like to use that. So, stuff. well, Corey, I'd like to see your your um, Cessna 360. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you could you could probably double ground loop that. I'm pretty sure I could. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well that's really great to see, um, not only to you know uh, to hear about the 110, and uh, I'm sure we'll probably play some video over that we've already just seen, but the uh, to finally get the the uh, model for you. Yeah, that's cool. So uh, and we can actually physically see what's going on because until this was here, I didn't quite understand. Um, some of the interesting things you had to overcome. Yeah. Well, thanks guys for uh, for coming and sharing with us again. Yeah, my pleasure. So, all right. Well, let's make sure that if you uh, like seeing our channel, that you like, subscribe, and share. And we're also going to include a link to the Fat Tire Cowboys in the description below. So make sure you check that out. And we'll see you next time in the hangar. <laughs>